back boys. Still stoked about my new engine for my Project EF Hatch. In this episode, we are going to be IDing this engine, try to figure out where it came from. And then we're gonna be doing an inspection to figure out what it needs. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video, I picked up this V16 for $500 in a questionable part of town late at night. I just threw it in the car. I didn't look at it at all. Uh, it was dark out. I bought it in a Walmart parking lot from some guy who couldn't speak very good English. But now I have a V16 and a transmission and some other stuff. Couldn't say no to it. So at this point, we got to see if I avoided rebuilding a D16 by rebuilding a V16 or if I can just stick it in and send it. First things first, let's figure out what this is. Now, I really have not looked this thing over in detail at all. I, I just got it on the engine stand today. Thank you, Zane. And uh, this is gonna allow us to inspect it, figure out what exactly I got here, what I'm gonna need to get it in the car, and if this thing needs to be rebuilt, which is entirely possible. There's a few things on here that make me um, really question the condition of this engine, but we will find out. All right, so the first thing I did was I checked the stamping on the block itself. This says B16A2, has a serial number right here, which doesn't really decode anything on the internet. But the B16A2 was used in two cars here in the States. It was used in a 96 to 97 Honda Del Sol and the legendary 99 to 2000 Civic Si. I don't know which this is from yet. What we should be able to do is look at the date code on the heads to figure that out. Right here, you're gonna see these little circular casting marks. These are rotated and changed out as these heads were produced. The first one right here, which reads 6-6, six, six, if you flip that around, that is actually a 9-9. So this must be from a 99 Civic Si. Let's check this out. There's no spark plugs in here. And that's kind of weird because why would you have an engine with no spark plugs and store it like that? And on top of that, on cylinder number four, there is something in the way. So here's cylinder number three. You can see there's nothing there. Here's cylinder number four. What is that? I know what that is. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that is a brass fitting for a compression tester. I don't know if that's what they were doing and the compression test was good, so they figured they'd pull it out of the car and sell it, or if someone was having problems and decided to pull it to put in a different engine, I don't know. So the first thing we gotta do is get that out of there, then we're gonna drain the oil, we're gonna throw an endoscope down there to check the cylinder walls, and then we are going to do a leak down test to figure if this thing needs to come apart or if I can run it as is. So I don't know if this is gonna work, but somehow I need to get that thing out of there. I can't really fit needle nose pliers in there and twist it. So what I saw somewhere on the internet is someone used a bayonet and they smashed it into that soft brass and then twisted the bayonet. I don't have a bayonet. We're gonna try just doing the same thing with a number two Phillips. I, I don't know if this will work, we'll find out. Look at that. So, yep. That was definitely a compression tester. Oh, wow. Fresh oil change. I mean, this oil looks freaking perfect. It's like still gold. It's not even dirty. Well, that's good news, I think. Unless someone changed the oil just to pretend that it's clean inside, which I hope they didn't do. They did tell me this was a running engine, so. I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna be using an endoscope that I got on Amazon for like 25 bucks. Um, these work pretty well. The only thing I don't like is the apps are from China and they want access to all your photos as well as your local network. And you need to do that in order for them to work, which, hmm. So we are going to shove them down in the cylinders and see what we see. Surprise. Oh. Surprise delivery. Beer delivery. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. I don't see any damage to the cylinder walls. There's definitely a bunch of carbon built up on the on top of the pistons, which is fine. It's actually a little bit of these. I don't know. I don't see anything too scary. Let's go to the next one. I mean, I didn't see anything totally wrong with it, so we're gonna go ahead and do a leak down test and see if this thing is within spec. If so, we're gonna run it. If not, we're gonna redo it.
Now, I have used the Harbor Freight leak down tester. It's a piece of crap, do not buy that thing. I've got a video on it up here. Um, but basically you wanna buy a nice one. Amazon has these, they're OTC, decent one. The gauges are nice, works well. So I've threaded this into the spark plug hole. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hook it up to the compressor and see what percent we get on leak down. Now on a V16, you should have like five to 8%. Anything under 10% is acceptable. And the nice thing about doing a leak down compared to a compression test is it tells you if your rings are bad or if your valves are bad. So you can see 50 PSI here and pretty much 10 here. It's because the exhaust, it's coming out the exhaust right now. What I'm gonna do is just turn the crank and we're gonna see how high it goes. Actually, this is above 50 now. I'm gonna turn this down. Just the math is easy. So what I wanna see for a less than 10% leak down is I wanna see uh, above 45. And what I'm seeing instead, which is awesome, is 49, maybe 48. That's really good. That's, that's real good. I hope the rest of the cylinders are that nice. All right, well, I got some bad news. Um, the first three cylinders were all within spec. They were like actually really good. However, cylinder number four, um, you can see that I'm putting 50 PSI into it. And as I rotate the crank, eventually the valves should shut, both the intake and the exhaust. However, what is happening, here's air coming out the, the uh, exhaust. You can hear the pitch go up as the valves begin to close. The intake valves are not sealing, and then it comes out the exhaust. So basically, it's the cylinder number four is dead. I'm not getting anything above 10 PSI. Um, the good news is, is I think it's just the valve. Uh, so I'm gonna pull the head and we're gonna do the top end of this thing and maybe we'll do the bottom end too i don't know but yeah this uh this b16 was 500 dollars, and i'm not gonna complain but dude who said it was in good running condition you are full of shit, buddy that's okay still got a deal all right see you next time dudes